Hi guys. Why are you in our cupboard? What? What's going on? Oh, yeah. Ruin up a meal. That's right. Okay, episode five. I got, I remember now. Okay, so you're here for a brewing up a meal episode, right? You're here for the food. Okay. Well, I mean. The beer? Let's get a beer. You want to get beer first? Or should we tell them what we're making today? No, we should get a beer first. Well, because the title tells them, right? We should get a beer first. So we can get a beer first. Let's get a beer. Okay, let's get a beer. All right. While Eileen is doing the flour mixture, I'm getting the beers. So we are having... Violin Monster by Arbor Brewing Company. And we're having agave wheat from Breckenridge Brewery. So let's get a pour on. So this is what happens when your wife knows more about beer, but you drink it faster. I put it in the wrong glass. Eileen's the one that has OC OCD, but this is really bothering me. So I'm gonna pour them into the correct glass. Okay, so right now I'm actually gonna make the seasoned flour mixture. I'm just gonna tell you guys what I'm using in my seasoned flour mix, and then I'm going to make it. So I'm using a lot of seasonings today. So I'm gonna list these really quick, and as I've been trying to do, I'm listing the recipe down below. Um, I'm using a combination of flour and cornstarch to add a lot of good crunch and good coating to the venison. And, oh, I didn't even say what I'm making. I'm making country fried steak using venison steak. And then we're having biscuits and gravy. The gravy also goes on the country fried steak. And then asparagus, sauteed asparagus. So it's kind of like breakfast, but like country style. You know? You're anyway. So... I'm using Montreal steak seasoning, obviously, no shock there. I'm using a little bit of tasty, um, what's it called? Tasty dead cow shake. Um, this is Pepper Palace. I bought this blend in Chicago and this one has a little bit of spice to it, but I, I've been adding a little bit when I've been making steak lately and it's been adding a lot of really good flavor. It complements well, but it adds a tiny bit of spice. So it's pretty good. So I'm using that guy there. I'm gonna be using some smoked paprika some basil, some ground fennel. I'm using, this is Pit Boss, and this is Champion Chicken. It has a lot of different stuff in it. I am using a little bit because I love the way it tastes. I'm doing, obviously, garlic. I'm doing rosemary, a little bit of ginger, and last but not least, a little bit of thyme, because you can never have enough thyme, right? Terrible joke, but that's what's happening. Okay, so babe, if you could help me with this next part. One. I need you to unwrap the venison and just simply put it into that Ziploc bag. Oh, yeah. And we have, see here, there's about a point six, point three, so that's, we have little, well, about one and a half pounds of venison. We're using a combination of a custom cut, which is of the steak portion of the deer, but it doesn't have a specific name. Um, it just says custom cut on the packaging from our processor. And then we have two that are loin. Loin chops. Yep. yep. So just go ahead and put them in a Ziploc bag. What you're going to need, this is kind of like my way of doing buttermilk without doing buttermilk, if that makes sense. So I'm using almond milk. I'm using lemon juice. And then I'm going to use some melted butter. You're going to need about a cup of almond milk and a tablespoon of lemon and then about two tablespoons of melted butter. You're gonna mix those together, throw them in the bag, and you're gonna let that sit with the meat for about 10 to 15 minutes to soak it properly before we start battering it in the seasoned flour. And I am making, they're not homemade biscuits, they are garlic knots, they're frozen. Um, I was gonna do drop biscuits, but then I saw these and they were on sale, so I got them. Um, they're at 425 in the oven, and I'm gonna be baking those. And then I'm also not making sausage gravy homemade. I am using Libby's canned sausage gravy. I've never had this before. I'm kind of just curious what it's like. If I don't make homemade, I usually just get those packets from the spice aisle that are like pepper country branded. Yeah. And I kind of make my own and I usually add sausage to it. But venison doesn't have a lot of fat in it. So I can't really use the pan with the excess fat to make a stock or a uh, roux for a gravy base very easily but I will use the pan droppings 
and put them into the sauce before I saute mushrooms and uh, parsley. So I'm doing something. I'm just not doing it with that. And then I just have asparagus that I'm going to saute. But let's get into the beer. I think that's a good, a good point for the beer. I think I, I need it right now. So first I'm going to melt butter before I get the beer. What? Before beer? Well, I just need to get this in the microwave and then I can start kind of focusing. At least I have something going for what you're doing. I'm really excited about tonight's dinner. Um, it's kind of a comfort meal and it's not healthy by any means, but it's been terrible, harsh weather here. And it really, truly feels like it's finally a Michigan winter. And um, kind of got... We got hammered. We have like over two feet of snow. It's been negative temperatures almost every single day. And I just crave, I crave soup and I crave casseroles and I crave, I crave like southern cooking comfort food. That's what I crave. So yeah. that's what I'm doing. Okay, so I have... Arbor Brewing Company Violin Monster. Spice double style with wheat. 9.5% ABV. I'm really interested in this one. One, it's a double stout. Two, it's Arbor Brewing. They've been around since 1995 and they're from Ann Arbor, Michigan. I've not really had much by them at all. It's very upsetting in the glass. You can't see the, through the glass at all. It's a thin nail width of caramel head on it. It looks like a really, really good beer. It actually looks like it's going to be really bitter, but we'll find out. And the name is really funny as well. Okay, 35 IBUs. There have been eight check-ins from people we know. 7,600 ratings overall, giving it a 3.7. And this is actually not Ann Arbor, but it's Ann Arbor area. It's Ypsilanti. Oh. Brewed with midnight wheat, warming spices, and a hint of brown sugar, the Violin Monster is black as night and packs a punch at 9.5% ABV. Unleash your inner beast, but beware. It finishes with a bite. Okay, it's going to be bitter at the end. A lot of people are giving it a 3.75. I don't see any commentary. Oh, people are saying deep. People are saying dark. People are saying bitter. Dark fruit notes. Holy hell, I didn't realize this is a Belgian strong dark ale at 9.5. Definitely my nightcap, someone said. So that's kind of funny. All right. I've heard well. enough. I'm going to get in and see for myself. Oh, it smells like black note from Bell's. It smells like a barrel-aged beer. It's very, very dark. Very deep and rich coffee and chocolate notes, and I am getting a dark fruit smell, like a raisin or a Dates, date. Yeah, yeah, raisin or a date or a plum even. You go ahead and get a nose really quick. Yeah. Um, it's dark. It's, it's, it's dark. A, it's a, yeah, it's like a purple fruit. Date. Yeah, like for smell. sure. Raisins, dates, plums. Wow. Well. That's a sipping beer. That's one of those beers you do not drink fast. Um, it mellows out. If I try to kind of like move my tongue around the top of my mouth, I'm able to kind of mellow out the palate a little bit and distinguish what flavors I'm getting the most. I would say chocolate the, mo the most more than I would get coffee from it. It is bitter, but not too bitter. I don't really get a bite at the end at all, actually. I think it's actually creamy and sweet at the very end, but it kind of hits you at, at, at the beginning. As soon as it hits your mouth, you're like, whoa. And the smell is so prominent, especially in the proper glass. Thank you, Dana, for putting it in the right <laughs> glass. Um, you're, you're getting a lot of that nose before you actually allow it to get into your mouth. So this is really interesting. I'm, I'm wondering what Dana will say about it. There's something about, like, prune, maybe? Yeah, a little like bit. A prune? So I have my melted butter here. That's lemon. This is lemon. I'm adding it to the butter. Okay. <clears throat> what do you think? Interesting. Right? Um, definitely that purple fruit, like... Not great, but uh, the plum, the raisin date, raisin date side of things. Yeah, um, and, kind of and a hint of chocolate. Like oh a, yeah, a hint of chocolate. I in mainly there. get chocolate. So it's 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 pretty good. It's pretty good. I don't mind it at all. 
All right, here's our venison bag. That's um, <laughs> not attractive looking, but we fill up the gross. soap for about 10 minutes. Right, and then we're going to start coating. And I, yeah, very simple meal. It's pretty quick to make. Yeah. I don't have a lot of steps. You gotta do your I, beer. I thing. wonder what the uh, reference to this violin monster is. What What's the reference there? I don't really know, honey. I mean, like, because I worked in Ypsilanti. Okay. For for where for quite what company? A while, actually, for Sam's Club. Oh, okay. In Ipsy. Um, in fact, when that Sam's Club opened up brand new, I opened it. I mean, it's got kind of a little wear. I really don't know what O'Brien's doing, so I'm just letting them see what he's doing. Oh, his... Tell them what happened. Oh. He had a harness on, and, and it's... It kind of... It cut into it him. It too tight, and it kind of cut into him a little bit, and he's not happy about it. Well, so. he's lost... Like, he has he's two rectangles a, of fur that are gone, he's such a and they've scabbed up. walker. Like, yeah. he's so hard to walk. That I was afraid he would get off, so I tightened it too tight. It's a new style harness we have and not tried it before, ended too. Up, um, giving him a little bit of a here. Turn him upside down, and I'll show them. Giving him a little bit of a rash on his Move chest the hair here. a little bit so they can see. So he's licking it. Yeah, he has two rectangles of hair that's missing, Stop. and Stop. I put some petroleum jelly on it earlier, and moisturizer, and some vitamin E, which is helping it heal. But he's just he's just irritated with it, really. Yeah, he's not. He shouldn't be doing. You want to try some violin monster? All right, you should do your beer, though, and then I will... I'm going to start prepping the pan right. for the asparagus. It's an agave wheat, unfiltered wheat ale brewed with agave nectar. Um, and it's Breckenridge Brewery from Colorado. We've had a couple of beers by them. I, I, I think we like them. I don't remember what, they, what ones they've done. But it's really kind of cool. They've got a little um, uh, okay. more day skeleton face guy. Is that what you call it, Morty? No, Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead. Skeleton guy with um, meat in his mouth. And I'm not, yeah, sure what the, not sure what the reference there is. John told me he had that beer and he actually really liked it. And he was shocked because his wife, who does not like craft beer, actually liked it. I'm not much of an agave person. Uh, I am. Eileen likes it a lot. so. We'll I, I like it as a, um, a duplicate for honey. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a good... Alternative, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of um, very sweet. I just threw bit. asparagus in a pan and some portobello mushroom slices. Very sweet. A little muted. Not really great. No? Not really great. Really? No, I don't like it at all. You don't? No, I like yours better, actually. Oh, well, I don't think I'm going to be giving it to you. Well, come on. No. And I'm going to add some seasoning to this as well. Nothing crazy, just a little bit of that chicken spice blend and the Montreal in here. I have it on a low simmer. I'm going to start getting my oil heated up for the venison steak. And then I'm going to grab, if you could grab that out of the freezer for me, honey, the uh, garlic knots. I'll throw that in there. And then I'm going to try Dana's beer and see how very bad it is. So Dana said it tasted a little bit of like sourness, right? Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. A really strange smell. It's really far down in the glass. So I really can't get a good nose on it. But it has... A malty, slight sweetness to it. <coughs> oh, wow! Yeah, that's not great. It tastes <laughs> tastes very dry. It's not it's not sweet or tropical or juicy at all. It's very bready. I don't really get an agave nectar taste from it. It does have a little bit of a dusty taste kind of a weird description but it's almost like an old book has been liquefied with a loaf of bread and like one fruit I don't know not great I'd give this like a two and a half it's drinkable but it's not enjoyable I'm gonna start dredging my venison pieces in the seasoned flour 
Get it nice and coated. I could double coat it if I wanted to. You know what, I'm gonna throw it back in the bag, get it a little bit wet again, and then throw it back in. Okay, the venison is in the oven, making sure that it is in a nice warm pink center in the center of each piece. I did make sure that the coating was nice and thick and was brown on the outside. In the same pan that I cooked the venison, I used the excess drippings and flavor from the venison to kind of cook the canned sausage gravy that I'm using today. I did add a little bit of milk to make it less thick though. So it should marry together really well. The garlic knots have come out of the oven. They are right there. And then the asparagus is nice and sauteed with some portobello mushrooms. I added a little bit of lemon and some seasonings to that as well. And the venison is out shortly. So I will see you guys in a moment when we are going to eat. In a moment. Okay, we are both gonna try one bite of the venison country fried steak before sitting down and enjoying our meal. Ready? Absolutely delicious. Wow. So good. Holy smokes. It's smoke. creamy and flavorful oh and uh, buttery. And then the venison is really, really rich and deep and... Oh my God, is that good. Yeah, it's really, delicious. really good. Nice job. Just as good as my beer. What? All right, we're gonna go eat our meal sitting on the couch watching some Netflix. Thank you for joining <laughs> us for another episode of Brewing Up a Meal. I will link the recipe that I use down below, which is kind of just whatever I felt like doing. And that was amazing. Thank you, honey. We're gonna have a whole plate of it. Let's do it. Drink good beer and eat good food. Cheers. Cheers. You're not drinking good beer. I'm living up to both of our things. It's bad though. I mean, I'm, John misread this one. He said that he, his wife liked it. She doesn't like craft beer though. Did he have it? No. No. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I'm hungry. See. You gonna show it up? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Editing this while I'm hungry is equivalent to going to Costco while hungry. I wish I had samples to eat while I was editing. Oh, don't, don't forget to hit subscribe right here and watch more of our content right here. Cheers.